Hello and welcome to Val's Cyber Digest. My name is Val Stoinov and I'm the owner of End-to-End -End Cyber Consulting. In this digest, I wanted to summarize and share with you some of the more interesting current developments in the cyber world and to share my thoughts as a cyber expert on dealing with cyber risks, threats, and vulnerabilities. So today, first we will look at the Garmin ransomware hack, then we will discuss privacy in the social networking world, and finally, we will review a trend in cybersecurity known as cyber mercenaries or hackers for hire. Okay, first let's look at the ransomware attack on Garmin. Now, for those who are not familiar with Garmin, it is a company that manufactures navigation devices and fitness trackers. What we found out last week through a company press statement was that Garmin was the target of a cyber attack. So here's what we know of the attack. Now, first, it seems to have been attributed to an organization known as Evil Corp, which is a group of Russian hackers headed by Maxim Yakubets, a 33-year-old Russian national. Now, what we know about the gentleman is that he lives a fairly lavish lifestyle, uh, drives a Lamborghini, uh, which has a custom license plate with the Russian word thief on it. We also know that he paid more than a quarter of a million dollars for his wedding. And all this lavishness appears to have been funded by the victims of cybercrime perpetrated by his group. We also know that there's a $5 million reward by the FBI for any information leading to his capture or arrest. Now, what we also recently found out was that the hackers used a ransomware called Wasted Locker. That ransomware caused the shutdown of Garmin factories and production facilities, crippled the customer support function, brought down websites, including the main website, and shut down the Garmin Connect fitness app. Essentially, data on critical corporate systems was scrambled and encrypted by the attackers. Now, in terms of a timeline, on July 23rd, Garmin issued a press statement stating that it was the victim of a cyber attack that encrypted some of the systems. On July 25th, images of a ransom note were leaked on, on Twitter. Now, normally, ransomware attacks start much earlier, so hackers might have spent time on the Garmin network preparing for the attack and potentially identifying and stealing sensitive information. Next, let's look at the short and long-term potential impact and discuss some recommendations to prevent ransomware attacks. Now, in terms of short-term impact, we know that Garmin operates two major lines of business, fitness trackers and navigation devices. Now, as innocuous as fitness trackers may seem, they capture a lot of sensitive information, such as vitals, pulse, and person's location, number of steps, and others. Now, navigation devices also have risks. We know that in addition to critical corporate systems, the attack also impacted the aviation and marine sections of the Garmin business. And this resulted in the temporary grounding of aircraft that relied on Garmin navigation systems. So what are the long-term impacts? Now, Let's keep in mind that ransomware attacks often consist of three stages. The first usually would be the breach, I get inside the network. The next stage would be theft of sensitive data. And the final stage would be deployment of malware that encrypts the machine. Now, we have to make a note here. Garmin has stated that no sensitive data has been stolen, but we may not know the results of the forensic investigation for, for quite some time. So let's for a second assume that sensitive data was stolen. So how could tracker data be used? One way to use tracker data is to mine and analyze it to infer information about the lifestyle of the owner of the tracker. Does the owner of the tracker have elevated pulse and don't move very often? In that case, could they have a chronic condition such as diabetes? Or do they move normally but have high pulse even when they don't move? Could they be constantly under stress? Now, what do we get if we analyze the GPS coordinates that the tracker keeps? Could an individual be engaged in military or sensitive government activity? How could data from the navigation devices be used? Can they tell us where an aircraft and ship has been and maybe help uncover potentially sensitive locations or operations? Now, there's a lot of sensitive information that can be inferred from data that we would normally think would not be of much use. So what are some of the recommendations to protect against ransomware attacks? Now, first and foremost, companies need to implement appropriate cyber hygiene measures. And you will ask, so what is cyber hygiene? It is a set of best practices and measures to protect the user's systems and data. 
Some of these measures may include strong passwords, system activity logging, analyzing anomalous activity, and generally securing computers, applying patches. Now, companies should also implement anti-ransomware measures. A few days ago, I posted a video focusing on ransomware and some of these measures that companies can implement. So I will post a link for you to review. And finally, the NSA and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency encourage organizations to have a plan to know how to address the signs of a ransomware attack and to have the ability to immediately disconnect their key infrastructure from the internet and to be able to go manual. Next, let's look at social networking privacy. Um, in this interesting article, the author discusses the security of direct messages or DMs over sensitive networking sites. Now, what we saw in the recent Twitter hack is that there is no guarantee that these messages are safe, that there is an illusion of safety and security. So not only you should not use DMs to communicate sensitive information over social networking platforms, but you should not forget that anything you post on the internet may stay there forever. Okay, next let's look at cyber mercenaries or hacking for hire. Now we know from the India Times that there are hundreds of cyber mercenaries in that country. So it is a phenomenon that is experiencing significant growth. But what is a cyber mercenary? Now, some of you may know that in the hacking community, we have a general division of hackers based on their intentions. We have the white hat hackers and we have the black hat hackers. White hat hackers in general use their skills and knowledge to secure and protect networks. Black hat hackers, on the other hand, use their skills for criminal activities such as technical support scams, hacking into systems and corporations, data theft, ransomware, and other malicious activities. Now, we know that India has been famous for supporting IT services. So could these cyber mercenaries be individuals who initially provided legitimate technical support services in call centers, which then transitioned to technical support scams and who are finally upgrading to hackers for hire? Now, let's have a look at an in-depth investigation into a company that provides cyber mercenary services. I recently reviewed a series of articles detailing a highly organized hack for hire campaign by an Indian based company who, on behalf of its clients and within the span of seven years, launched extremely sophisticated attacks against different targets. The Toronto based internet watchdog Citizen Lab spent over two years investigating this hack for hire operation, and it now claims this company was one of the largest spy for hire operations ever exposed. Now, who is this company? Um, it is an Indian company called Beltrox Infotech Services, codenamed Dark Basin by Citizen Labs. The hackers associated with the company have targeted thousands of individuals and hundreds of institutions on six continents. And the targets have primarily been US-based journalists, American nonprofits, and advocacy organizations associated with certain political and environmental issues. So what were the hackers after? From the investigation, we know that through different attacks, the hackers were trying to steal login credentials, internal corporate emails, which would then be used to get to more sensitive information. Now, we know that the attack lasted for more than seven years between 2013 and 2020. So how were the attackers getting to sensitive information? Very often, they would send phishing emails with embedded custom URL shorteners. URL shorteners are really short addresses that would hide and relay to a longer address. So if you got an email message with embedded link, it would read like something innocuous. But if you clicked on the link, it would redirect you to a longer malicious URL. Now, we also know that the hackers created sites that were identical to Google Mail, Yahoo Mail, and Facebook logging pages in order to trick users into thinking that they were logging into the legitimate sites and then they would steal the user login information. The hackers would also send fake Twitter messages, sometimes with malicious links. And finally, they would take stolen internal emails, repurpose those, and use those to target other individuals. Now, in conclusion, cyber mercenaries and hackers for hire seems to be a growing phenomenon where we're seeing the commoditization of cyber services to be used for malicious purposes. If there is a demand, there will be supply for these services. 
Now, one of the things that these attackers leverage is users. So we need to increase user awareness. We need to train our users who are the first line of defense and often what we call the weakest link. We need to understand the risk of cyber mercenaries. How likely would you or your company be a target for a hacker for hire? Now, recognizing these attacks and know how to deal with them. So this wraps up the digest. I hope that now you have a better understanding of the implications of the ransomware attack on Garmin and that you also understand the risks of sending direct messages over social platforms. You're better aware of the presence and threats posted by cyber mercenaries. Thank you very much.